Now we got the machine in the unloaded state. We haven't yet applied any loads to it. We got a geometrical thing to consider and we got a trigonomic thing to consider. This is considered that what you're seeing right now from the nine coil arrangement in 3D space exhibiting the magic skirt quality itself distorts time before anything even gets delivered to the loads. I had a, a mistake here. I'm understanding everything. Here's the evidence. And we're going to look at this evidence one step at a time. We got a lot of steps to go through. And on this step, this is the step of the unloaded state. That means we don't have loads anywhere. This is what the nine coil system itself produces. Now you're going to notice there's a row of meters in the background. The left one at the very top is 1.1 volts from the stator one. The next one is 1.2. And phase three is 0.09. Above them are the delivery lines. Right now, we're not concerned with the delivery lines, but later on we will be. Now in the nine coil assembly, because each phase has a resonant rise of voltage, those are the next terms to be represented. In. And that is one VI internal voltage, two VI, three VI. Since on the unenergized field state, or the rotational magnetism state, which is one or two states that can be used to procure power from the system, we find we can form the actual phase angles by the information contained on the third set of meters down there. Now, these are the time reference points between 2VI and 3VI. Right now, 2VI is at 5.2 volts. 3VI is at 20 volts. If they were 180 degrees apart in time, that would be 25.3 volts. But yet, the meter there shows in excess to a 180 degree phase angle. Now we go to the predominant interfacing that exhibits over a 180 degree phase angle, and that's the one between 1 and 3, as it's all labeled as shown below. We've got 8.7 coming from that source, we've got 20.1 coming from that source, it should be 28.8, .8. and yet we find yet another over unity in time degree phase angle on 1 3 measure. Now since we got two angles with the measuring by trigonometry alone, which comes down to this law of both science things that we'll go through next, we would scarcely suspect that any voltage will be present on the 1 2 measurement, which is 3.9 volts being between 8.7 and 5.2. And now we go down to decipher the whole problem and we use this thing called the law of cosines. The law of cosines is crucial for determining whether in fact time distortion is happening. And right now on the empty unloaded state, we're observing that time distortion in fact is happening. But we can't understand that. No, we can't understand that at all. Well, we come to this drawing here. On this drawing, we can arrive at a, a more than one peculiar state where the phase angles by trigonometric addition do not add to 360 degrees. In this drawing, we can look and take a typical state 
And from one stage of the transformation, and we'll be discovering these transformations all upwards as we continue, that red and that green vector arrow represents those vectors determined by the interphasal voltage. The interphasal voltage itself, as we can draw things out in our actual application, we can measure the bottom three meters as the interphasal voltages, then even put loads on them, and when we put the loads on them, we might stretch this triangle out to look something like that, and we can see from the initial frame of reference provided by the nine coil system, we are in fact distorting the time delivery distributed by the actual source of timing, the, alt the AC three phase alternator, car alternator, modified with the diodes removed, conventional AC, uh, Delta Remy model, whatever, in the board model. Well, this can be converted by the transformation afforded by the nine coil system itself. And then we distribute the source voltages out of time with each other. This is all negotiated by the Q factor also. So right now we haven't even turned our field on and we can know what the Q factors are just by reading the VI readings. But here we're gonna go back to that diagram and back to this one here. We have difficulty in filming ourselves. Hard me, folks. We're about to look at it. And then we're back to this drawing here. On this drawing here, I said again, in the background, it looks like the back two phases are almost 180 degrees out of phase. And yet we can't understand how we're getting readings where something can be over 180 degrees out of phase. On this particular drawing, what we've done is the bottom purple arrows represent a section of time that in some states we observe that time's not expanded instead of time is contracted. Now let's look what happens when we take them two-dimensional vectors and remove that section bottom section of contracted time we're going to remove that bottom section of contracted time and we're going to fold it into a cone so that now the vectors are to be they become three triggering a time angle Break that time angle. You can see from the camera's viewpoint off of it that that 180 degree phase angle now to the observer actually becomes over 180 degrees. So, in a certain sense of reference frames, we can take the mathematics and it's formally based on 2D geometry laws by 3D laws to the geometry to try to begin then to understand how and why we are achieving this result from the nine coil system whereby we're achieving more voltage between the points of reference than should possibly be true not only on just one corner but two of them and even leaving voltage left over for the left hand meter now at 3.9 volts. Thank you for this one.